So one dog full of boring numbers right after the launch, what could possibly go wrong? So my name is Michal Kubeček, I'm from Susa Labs, and I would like to talk about the IPv6 routing lookup performance and scaling of the routing lookup. So let's start with some background story. Uh, there is a principle uh, that some of our customers expect, uh, which I call IPv6 parity. The principle is, if it works with IPv4, it should work also with IPv6. Well, it's better than it used to be. Uh, uh, it mostly holds these times, but there are still some exceptions. And in particular, when it comes to performance, uh, we cannot always, in general, expect IPv6 to perform exactly as well as IPv4 does. But it shouldn't perform much worse. So the question is, does it perform as well as it could? Well, if the answer was yes, uh, there would be a little point in having this talk. So I guess you can uh, expect, assume the answer is no. Well, at least in some cases. So let's start with some background story and experience of one of our customers uh, who filed a bug in November 2012. Uh, the name, as usual, is a bit misleading. Well, the problem of theirs was they had host with many, uh, with intensive IPv6 traffic, routing to about 200,000 different hosts. And they experienced uh, heavy contention on IPv6 uh, FIB garbage collector lock. Uh, the contention was uh, heavy enough to trigger the soft lockup detector. So it was really affecting their function. And a similar amount of traffic or a similar traffic pattern with IPv4 work just fine on the same box. So, uh, we suggested them to erase the garbage collector threshold and uh, <coughs> routing uh, table limits, which worked. They were happy. Until a few months later, they opened a new bug. This time, the summary is even more misleading. Uh, it was the same host and the same project as before. And they experienced bond flapping and uh, it was caused by dropped packets uh, because they were using ARP monitor for some reasons I don't want to go into. And analysis showed that uh, the network card was dropping packets because the networking stack was too slow to process them. And some of those dropped packets were the ARP probes or replies to the ARP probes, which caused the bonding driver to believe uh, the interface is down. Well, the reason was that uh, when the, uh, we suggested them to raise the garbage collector threshold, they ended up uh, raising it too much to the values where the routing uh, subsystem wasn't able to process the packets fast enough. So the further analysis uh, showed that uh, whenever the limits are low, uh, the garbage collector uh, the contention occurs, as before. Whenever the limits are set high, the packets are dropped and bond is flapping. And we found out that there was actually no value where neither of these two would occur. Uh, this time we were a bit lucky because we found that uh, the algorithm triggering the garbage collector for FIB6 uh, had some deficiencies uh, causing uh, an effect where if one CPU was doing the garbage collecting, any other CPU would uh, decide to do the same, would wait for the lock, only to run the garbage collector again once the first CPU started, uh, finished, sorry. So this, is, uh, this was something that was unnecessary and an easy fix was to prevent rerunning the garbage collector again and again for each CPU in a row. So the uh, solution was to 
only use dry lock for the garbage collector lock so that if we found that somebody is, somebody is already garbage collecting, we wouldn't try to do the same. Again, the customer was satisfied, uh, the patch was accepted, and uh, the bug was closed. Well, however, we didn't actually solve the real problem, the background problem, which was that the IPv6 lookup performance was less than satisfactory. And in particular, that it doesn't uh, scale uh, to the number of uh, simultaneous threads as well as it does in IPv4 case. Moreover, uh, there was another customer who claimed to encounter similar problems on the kernel which contained this fix, but it's unconfirmed because they didn't tell us, actually. I uh, only found that a year or two later in some uh, mailing list. Okay, uh, small intermezzo. Uh, experience from the same customer. Well, this is a customer who works as kind of QA for dark corners of IPv6 because they are constantly hitting strange bugs. Uh, they added LXC containers to the picture, which means namespaces. And again, they were hitting the contention of garbage on garbage collector lock. And analysis showed that the problem this time is that uh, while we have per namespace routing tables and FIB trees, and per namespace garbage collector, uh, this garbage collector, these garbage collectors, actually, are protected by one shared lock. And also the handling of so-called walkers is shared, and their protection is shared, which caused these contentions. Uh, this is really fresh, because I only learned about this last Friday. Uh, they are currently testing a provisional fix, and if it works for them, it's going to be submitted perhaps next week. So it's still ongoing process, but the background is there is still a problem uh, with the routing lookup performance. So what I decided was to find out if there is a problem and how big the problem is. So for this, uh, for this purpose, I decided to do a micro benchmarking of the IPv6 routing lookup. Uh, the technique uh, is similar to what David Miller was using when working on the routing cache removal for IPv4. So the idea is if we cannot do this, we cannot micro benchmark this from user space because uh, we would rather benchmark the netlink, not the routing lookup. So we do this from a kernel module. The kernel module is running the benchmark, is uh, calling directly the lookup functions when loaded. Uh, and because I was interested in performance uh, for many simultaneous threads, or more simultaneous threads. Uh, this is run in several kernel threads. Uh, and uh, each kernel thread is running given number of lookups. And uh, all this is uh, repeated and can be done for IPv4 or IPv6. And once finished, we can read the results and process them further. Uh, some technicalities, this was the, all was performed on one uh, reasonable uh, good machine with 24 logical CPUs without hyperthreading. Uh, original tests were performed in the SLE 12 kernel, which means 312, but uh, what I'm going to present today are results with a relatively fresh 441 kernel. Uh, all tests were performed in a single user system to minimize other effects from interfering. And uh, tests were performed with a routing table refilled with given number of routes from one to 100,000. Some more difficulties. Okay. Uh, I also subtracted the results for a dry run when no lookup was actually performed to the mitigate the influence of the overhead of the test itself. 
So let's go to the numbers. So these are uh, all numbers in all tables from now on will be in nanoseconds per one lookup. Oh. So let's look at the, these numbers are for a single thread test with uh, numbers of routes in the table from one to 100,000. The IPv4 numbers look relatively good. Uh, as expected, with growing size of the routing table, the uh, tests take longer, but uh, uh, the scaling is relatively fine. The IPv6 numbers are much worse. It's expected to be worse, but this is a bit too much. It's something like 50 times higher in the easiest case. Well, the relative growth with the number, of, with the size of the, the table is not as high as IPv4, but if you uh, take the absolute growth, it's actually mm, about the same. Yeah. So both IPv4 and IPv6 scale reasonably well with respect to the size of the routing table. What about scaling to the number of threads, simultaneous threads? Well, so if we take a look at IPv4, uh, we can see that it scales rather well. Well, uh, I also calculated the mean deviations, but uh, putting them in the same table would be too confusing, so uh, you will have to wait for the proceedings for those but uh, there is nothing, nothing exceptional. We can see that for 24 threads simultaneous, the lookup is a bit slower, but really not too much, 24 to 99, something like 20%. Uh, and this doesn't actually change for big routing table size. With IPv6, well, the results are much less impressive. We can see that the lookup time, the average lookup time, grows rather rapidly. And to see how rapidly does it grow, uh, let's take a bit different view. These numbers are average uh, duration of a single lookup. So we take uh, the total CPU time divided by the number of lookups across all threads. In this table, uh, I'm doing a bit different thing. I take the elapsed time for the whole test divided by the total number of, number of lookups. Uh, the reciprocal value of what is here would be uh, how many lookups can we do per unit of time, but I, I didn't like to switch between tables where more is better and uh, less is better, so it's still in the nanoseconds. So, as we can see, in ideal world, uh, the number should be inverse proportional to the number of the threads if the lookup scaled perfectly. We can see that it actually doesn't decrease uh, this well, not by far. And in some of the tests, not shown here, but in some of the tests, I could actually see that for higher number of threads, like 24, the, result, the final results in the last column would be actually higher than in the last, first column. So the result would be even worse than if the lookups were serialized, which is really, really bad. So we can see that the lookup for IPv6 uh, scales rather poorly to the higher number of threads. So uh, why? Uh, the problem is that IPv6 for uh, FIB is implemented in a, in a different way for historical reasons than in IPv4. It's hard to hear you. Ah, sorry. Ah, not used to the microphone, sorry. So, uh, with IPv6, we have an order three, and one problem is uh, per table read write spin lock. So, essentially, whenever we are writing to a routing table, nobody can perform even a lookup. Uh, there is some sophisticated, uh, sophisticated logic for so-called walkers, which helps to minimize the duration of these lockouts. But uh, the problem still is there. 
and it's made worse by uh, putting the cache entries to the same data structure. Uh, this effect was uh, minimized since 4.2 kernel uh, by the work of Martin Kafailao, so that now we are caching only the entries that we actually need to cache, like for example in response to PMTU. Uh, this effect was much worse in pre-4.2 kernels. And because we are putting these cache entries to the same structure, we need a garbage collector. And whenever the garbage collector starts, the performance uh, goes really bad. On the other hand, with IPv4, we have, we have a... So with IPv4, we have an LPC try level and path uh, compressed uh, prefix tree. The locking is based on RCU, so reading is essentially lockless on non-preemptive kernels. Uh, we don't have no cache entries in the FIB try. Uh, those are handled separately in the exception table. And so we don't need a garbage collector. So as a result, uh, for this kind of test, IPv4 performs much better. Well, uh, to be honest, I was a bit cheating here and the tests were a bit unfair to IPv6 because IPv4 tests uh, test call function FIB lookup, uh, while IPv6 tests use IPv6 root output, which does uh, much more. The problem is that due to the design differences, it was hard to find a function which would correspond to FIB lookup. So let's do another round of results, this time using a function I IP root output key for IPv4, which uh, better corresponds to what we were using for IPv6. So it's the same results as before, again in nanoseconds. Uh, so uh, now we can see that with one root in the table, IPv IPv4 doesn't scale as well. Actually, it, uh, it scales similar, uh, similarly poor as it does for IPv6. But what is interesting that with, is that with a bigger table, like 10,000 or 100,000 roots, uh, the numbers are actually similar. Uh, sorry, uh, the scaling is uh, almost perfect as it was before. So this additional overhead we introduce in this test uh, scales poorly for small routing tables, but once the routing table is large enough, which means we have less collisions, uh, for example, when accessing the reference counts, uh, this effect is uh, essentially negligible as we can see in the lower line of the table. Uh, however, as we have seen uh, with IPv6, even having 100,000 routes doesn't actually help to uh, uh, make the scaling better. So to summarize, uh, uh, the problem with, I, uh, with IPv6 lookups is that uh, we are using the same uh, the same data structure for the table uh, for the static table or almost static table and for dynamic entries, and that the locking is done in a way which harms the performance whenever we we touch the data structure. So, uh, there are some weak points in the analysis. Uh, the biggest one, of course, is that these tests uh, do not really reflect a real life uh, scenario because uh, the real concurrency would be much lower, real concurrency on the lookups would be much lower in, uh, for real packets because uh, the lookup is only 
one part of the packet processing and for some packets, for a lot of packets, we are not doing the lookup at all or the full lookup. Uh, another weak point is that uh, with completely different design, it's uh, hard to do a fair comparison, uh, which would be still low level. Uh, also, another weak point is that for these tests, the large routing tables were randomly generated so that their structure or the patterns do not necessarily reflect uh, what do large uh, tables from real life routers look like. Uh, I have no idea how much this can affect the results. And of course there are many other factors which can affect the performance. Uh, however, I believe that the problem I tried to outline does exist and the scaling of uh, IPv6 root lookup is a problem that uh, also the customer in, uh, experience indicates does, is starting to affect real life systems especially those with high traffic directed to many different hosts uh, and systems with many CPUs, where many is already something like 24 or 32. So this is um, well uh, quite common these days already. So what can be done? Uh, I think it's obvious that uh, one idea uh, kind of presents itself and that is uh, what if we tried to implement uh, IPv6 FIB in the way similar to what we have for IPv4 because it works well and works fine, it's highly efficient for IPv4. So what if we tried to base FIB for IPv6 on the same uh, uh, data structure which means the uh, level and path compressed uh, prefix tree and the same approach to locking. Uh, Originally, I wanted and planned to present here also some results with the proof of concept implementation of this, uh, where only the data structure and algorithms would be uh, implemented in this way. But uh, last week, I found that uh, what I had was actually completely wrong, so I uh, don't have those numbers. At the end, so it's still on the to-do list. But I, I'm definitely planning to work on this and to check this direction and to see if this does help with the performance and with the scaling. Uh, of course, this is uh, the lookup itself and the data structure and the algorithms are not enough because there are some more details like the exception table. Uh, because there is a bit more exceptions for IPv6 and some things behave a bit differently. Uh, but uh, I believe uh, this, has, uh, this idea and this work has some potential. Oh. Sorry. So, thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, so, Are there any questions, comments?
Uh, well, the comment is that uh, there is actually work on uh, putting the exception handling in uh, uh, IPv4 uh, back to the main data structure, uh, which is a surprise for me. I never heard about that. <laughs> And uh, the second part was that uh, this risk of denial of service uh, attacks, attacks uh, uh, attacking uh, or targeting the exception handling could be much worse with IPv6, uh, which is exactly what I meant when I talked about the devil in the details, is that uh, these exceptions like PMTU are mm, going to be more frequent with IPv6. So. Uh, this is one uh, source of possible problems. Well, any, uh, anyway, I still think that even if the exceptions have to be handled in the main data structure, the RCU-based approach from IPv4 could still be uh, a plus or a an improvement against current state where we are using a per table read write lock because that is something that uh, also I didn't present the results from perf but uh, I also used perf to analyze what's going on during these tests and it indicates that uh, one sort, uh, source of problems is uh, the contention on reference counting and or not contention but the concurrency on the reference counters and one source of the problem is this uh, per table lock, uh, read write lock. So I believe that even if we have to put the exceptions back to the main structure, uh, unifying the implementation would still uh, pay out in the end. Uh, more questions or comments? Could you provide my comment on why IPv6 is possible because of You mean uh, why the implementation is different? I guess that's for historical reasons because, uh, well, I don't remember that because I'm working in kernel development only for five years, but uh, we must remember that until kernel 3.6, we still had uh, IPv4 routing cache in the old version. So I guess in the beginning when the IPv6 routing was implemented in this way, it was actually better than what we had in IPv4. But once uh, this was reworked to drop the routing cache, from IPv4, the uh, situation kind of reversed. But uh, that's only my guess, because I don't remember the discussions from that time. Uh, and this is also one uh, possible argument for unifying the implementation that it would make uh, management of the code easier if we could uh, use the same approach and do the same algorithms for both. Okay, so thank you once again.